Texas, the Lone Star State, home to lots of wide open land and some of the fastest growing cities in America. Texas is the first perfect place for high speed rail, so who will build this route, how fast will the trains be, and how do they plan to make a bullet train that can stand up to Japan's? Nowadays, you probably hear the name Texas Central Railway quite often in reference to high-speed rail in Texas, but it hasn't always been that way. Back in 2009, some investors were inspired by California high-speed rail to look for another potentially profitable route for high-speed rail. Seeing that Texas is one of the fastest growing states in America in terms of population, connecting Houston and Dallas seemed like a no-brainer. These investors founded a company called Lone Star High-Speed Rail LLC with a simple goal, connect Dallas to Houston in 90 minutes or less. This ambitious goal would essentially mean that trains would travel almost 250 miles in an hour and a half, meaning trains would have to keep an average speed of around 165 miles per hour with a straight line route between the two cities. This goal time of 90 minutes would cut the travel time in half between these two cities from the current 3.5 hour drive to a 1.5 hour train ride. The plan was to build a track as straight as possible between the two cities with an additional stop at Brazos Valley near College Station, Texas. After a long wait, the company, now known as Texas Central Railway, publicly announced that they had secured $75 million in private funding to allow for construction to begin. Unfortunately, there were some bumps along the way. Texas Central began conducting environmental tests in the areas that they planned to build the line, and many residents were concerned about their property value being affected by the grade-separated tracks, as in order to have straight tracks through towns, tracks would have to be elevated as to not be slowed down by grade crossings. Other landowners happily gave their support to the train, signing land agreements, though lawsuits and news stories slowed down the project a little bit. Soon enough, the company began to plan a project, and they decided on a few preferred routes, and even picked out their ideal rolling stock. From the beginning, Texas Central wanted N700s nearly identical to those used on Japan's Tokaido Shinkansen. For a while, Texas Central was leaning towards the N700i train set, which was an N700 that was slightly modified for export, but as the years went on, JR released an updated version of the N700 known as the N700S, with improved technology and aerodynamics, so right now that's what it sounds like they want to use. Trains in the US would have 8 cars and a top speed of 205 miles per hour. They also decided to use a similar signaling system to Japan, known as the Digital ATC System. This system is great for trains traveling at speeds near 200 miles per hour because the signals are on a monitor in the cab. When you're going that fast, it's hard to even make out what aspect a wayside signal is displaying. In January of 2017, Former President Donald Trump declared this project as a national transportation infrastructure priority. Construction was planned to begin in 2019. Not only would the construction create a fast way to travel between Texas's two biggest cities, but it was also projected to create 10,000 jobs each year and 1,500 permanent ones. By May of 2018, Texas Central announced their ticketing partnership with Amtrak, meaning people could use Amtrak.com to buy tickets for Texas Central. If I had to guess, this might also mean that if private funding ever falls through, Amtrak might take over construction and eventually service on this line especially considering how much President Biden loves trains, but I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself. What this definitely means is that there will be an Amtrak and Texas Central transfer station in both Houston and Dallas. Amtrak also offered up training and marketing services to help Texas Central. The two railroads are also working together to sync the schedules of both Amtrak and Texas Central trains to make transfers to and from trains easier. The FRA has also been helping out Texas Central. In September of 2019, the FRA began rulemaking for safety regulations along this route, known as the Rule of Particular Applicability. These rules will be special for Texas Central, as Texas Central is a new type of railroad for the United States. These rules were completed a year after in September of 2020, and it's the most recent update that we have. Texas Central plans to begin construction in 2021. They say it will take 5-6 to six years to construct, with testing beginning in 2025, but knowing how slow almost all construction projects are in the US, it might take longer. Once construction is complete, testing will last a year or two, depending on how well it goes. Finally, service will begin in 2026. The total cost of the project is supposed to be around $20 billion, and that includes building all the lines, viaducts, and all other infrastructure, as well as power substations, maintenance facilities, stations, and rolling stock. Over the next 25 years, the project is expected to have a direct economic impact of about $36 billion, effectively paying for itself. On top of that, Texas Central is privately owned, meaning it will pay taxes to the state to improve surrounding areas. In conclusion, Texas Central was once thought of as a distant dream, but it's clear that Texas Central is a well-organized company and it won't be too much longer before it's a reality. As with all construction projects, things can change instantly, but right now the future is bright despite setbacks caused by the pandemic. I remain hopeful for the future of Texas High Speed Rail and hope it becomes a reality. We'll just have to wait and see. This concludes today's episode of High Speed Rail Week. 
This episode is part of a bigger series of four other mini docs. Click the video on the left to see yesterday's episode and the video on the right to see tomorrow's episode. If you're watching this when it's new, there's probably no video there because tomorrow's video isn't out yet, so be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's episode at noon Eastern. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.